because you are faithful. You are faithful. And Lord, you have a promise. Your promise is that you watch over your word to perform it. Father, I thank you that I have the privilege of standing before your people and minister the word. Father, I pray, prepare the hearts of men and women. Let the hearts of God be that fertile ground. That as a seed of the word comes, let it take root, germinate, and that it shall bring forth fruit. Let not the birds of the air eat of that seed. Let not the cares of this world, the thistles and the thorns, choke that seed. O oh Lord, grace for the seed to bring forth fruit. In the name of Jesus, touch my lips of clay. Quicken me by your spirit. Lord, minister through me. May I be your mouth as you speak. Oh God, as if Christ would be standing here speaking to his people. Purify your bride. Wash her by the cleansing of the word this morning. Bless the hearer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Um, I introduced to us on um, Sunday last week that the Lord has called us this year to separation. <clears throat> and I want to try by the grace of God as he gives me grace to help us and teach us what it means and how we are to separate. To separate is to consecrate. Amen. To consecrate. To consecrate simply, mean, simply means to be set apart. Amen. So today's word is titled, Set Apart. Amen. In keeping with our theme. Like I was saying, I was a bit challenged in my spirit. And... Um, yeah, probably maybe you can say maybe a bit of discouragement. And I'm thinking, Lord, I don't know why you called me to minister. And the way I minister, I don't minister like any other person on the block. But I'm praying for grace. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'm praying for grace. You see, to some of us, the Lord is whispering to us. To some of us, the Lord is reminding us. <coughs> to some, the Lord is literally shouting at us. It takes wisdom. You see, there are no coincidences in God. The Bible says that, you know, God defines the bounds of habitation for men. So every place where you find yourself at every time, I can tell you there's something that God wants to minister or expose you to. Which in the moment may not make sense. But in tomorrow, when you begin to count your blessings, and take stock, you will look back and say, I now see what the Lord was trying to minister to me two years ago. Amen. Amen. Set apart. I want you to track with me, and I want you to stay with me. We are in the end times. If you don't see that, I pray that the Lord will help you open your eyes. The world is sleepwalking into serious upheavals. And the enemy wants to blind us into business as usual. 
I pray that we awaken. You see, when God made man, he blessed man in different dimensions. He blessed him with the capacity to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, and to subdue. That mandate is the Adamic mandate. It is a mandate that enables man to interact with the three-dimensional world on this earth. And that man should be the in charge of the affairs and the activities here on earth. And in so doing, man has been given capacity and a blessing such that right now as I'm ministering, others will hear the word via the media of YouTube. It is a development that man has established. We can build planes, we have built cars, there's so much that we have done within the crucible of the blessing of God unto Adam, the Adamic blessing. That's why it is easy for people to disregard the existence of God because of the many things that man has achieved godless. I don't know if you understand me. You understand? Yeah. So we have built bullet trains. We one time built a Concorde, the fastest aircraft. We've done so many marvels. And if you care to study most, if not all these men, did not have God in their lives, neither did they regard him. So there's a, 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 a temptation to begin to think that we are a people that can exist without God oblivious of the reality that everything we are doing emanates from the blessing that God decrees at the foundations of the earth. Secondly, there's a reality which I want us now to preach about is the way that we are to deal with God. Because we have capacity to deal with the earth subdue it, and all manner of things in the three-dimensional world. However, God also set an infrastructure upon every man created of God by which he as creator would be able to also interact with you and me as God. Hallelujah. Now, at best, at best, we are ignorant. At, with all the marvels that we can talk about, at best, man is ignorant. Because if you understand everything that your naked eye sees, everything that you are able to perceive is a shadow. <laughs> it's a shadow of what is pertaining in the realm of the spirit. The spiritual world is alive and well. The physical world is alive and well. But because we are three-dimensional, we are more accustomed to this world. That's why God took it upon himself to begin to educate man of how he is going to interact with him. Are you with me? Uh, what's, what's the name again? Yes. Fernando, Fernando come. I don't know how long this will take me. You see this young man? He's a boy. Amen? 
You see, he's got ears. He's got a mouth. He's got a nose. He's got hair. What's this? Arm, yeah? Inside, in the stomach, the intestines, okay? In the blood, in the body, there's blood vessels. It's got skin. Do you realize that this infrastructure was established in the womb? Mm. Huh? It was finished. For you that understand, at what point can a child be born fully as a human being? How many months? No, no, no. Where it's complete formed? 24 weeks. 24 weeks. What's that? In months? I don't know, I don't know mathematics. <laughs> eh? seven, six, six, seven months? Because I've seen people born at seven months, six months. Yeah? And, and, and it's a complete. It may be small, but it's complete. You understand? At six to seven months, everything that is required of a human being are what? Formed. Does a child need ears in the womb? Does a child need to walk about in the womb? But the womb, the, the, the legs are developed where? In the womb. Why is the legs developed in the womb? Ah, that's the word I was looking for. The reality is that where, where he is coming from, he has to be formed in keeping with the environment in which he is going to interact with. So he's got ears and he's got legs, but he cannot walk in his mother's womb. But a time will come when those legs will be needed to be used and interact with the dimension to which he will manifest. I want you to stay with me. Go on, sir. I want you to stay with me. God has put an infrastructure in you. It is his spirit. You see, he's not going to interact with you like you interact with anyone else. Sometimes he will do because he's God. But ultimately, the landing platform for interactions and dealings, because he is a spirit, he will come by way of your spirit. I have said to us several times that we are to leave church mentality outside and come into the truth of the gospel. God was trying to teach Adam the dealings with man, but Adam didn't finish the program. But God didn't give up. So as time went by, God found one man, Adam, sorry, Abraham, God found Abraham and began to school him the ways of the spirit. Okay? And as time went by, he chose Adam's seed to make it a nation. He promised him. But it wasn't just going to be any other nation. The idea was to make it a nation of priests. Are you with me? The nation of priests was because God was going to teach every Israelite the way of priesthood. Sister any Jew, when they left Egypt and came to the mountain Sinai, God began to bring the intention and the idea that he had that every Jew should be turned into a priest. However, before that reality, a people sinned and bowed to idols, and in so doing, 
God shifted the plan. The choosing of Levi or Levi as a tribe that is going to minister to God as priest was in essence an indictment on the entire bunch of Israel to say this is what you could have been. And then when Levi stepped aside, God now brought lessons. He brought teachings to what he wanted, he had wanted to teach the entire Israel. Now he began to teach to this group who were called the Levites or the priests ministering unto God. Don't forget the infrastructure of a child. We'll come back to it. The message is what? Set apart. The Levites were separated. And whereas everyone else, when they were going to inherit the land, had a portion of an inheritance, the Levites had no inheritance. Their inheritance was God himself. Huh? So, whereas everyone else can labor, the Levites were never to labor. So everyone else would labor and bring for the Levite. I pray you understand the essence of being a, of priesthood. I pray you understand, Papa, the essence of priesthood. It's, 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 it's dynamic. That was the idea of God. And now God began to show them what he needs them to do from the dressing, the attire, the consecration. In other words, how they were to atone, to purify themselves before they can go and minister with God. And also God set up a tabernacle and procedures of the burnings and the candles and the holy of holies. And he said, in that holy of holies, he is going to sit at the mercy seat by the ark of the covenant. And not anyone can enter into that place unless the chief priest who is able to be consecrated and well sanctified can enter in that place. The person who entered in that place went and represented the whole group. To who? To God. Now, those guidelines and those steps are what set apart a Levite. That's why they were called what? Priests. Now, this year, the Lord has reminded us that he is calling us unto a place of separation. The reason, is, the reason why God has begun to remind us to be set apart because God has business with us. Are you hearing me? Mm. God has business with us. Whereas we can do business with a three-dimensional world and achieve so many things, God also wants now you and me to be consecrated, to be set apart so that we can now do business with God. However, we have to learn the way. We have to learn the way. You see, Fernando didn't just wake up and start running. He didn't just wake up and start speaking. There were teachings and lessons to a point where he learned, when you say hola, it means hi. Are you with me? There was a language that he had to learn. There was a way he had to learn to walk and begin to run. It is the same in the things of the spirit. 
What God wants is for us to be set apart so that we can understand the ways of God and be able to minister with God. Then God will be able to reveal himself to each and every one of us on condition that we keep our consecration, our separation. So God is putting a demand upon us to be set apart. Leviticus 10. Leviticus 10, verses 1 to 3. Is that 12, 12 10? Okay. Leviticus. If we are in Leviticus chapter 10, Stasheli, if you could help us, verses 1 to 3. And Nadab and Abihu, the, Abihu son, yes. yeah, the sons of Aaron, took mm. either of them his censer and put fire therein mm. and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Hallelujah. How many understand what the meaning of that scripture is? <laughs> you see, There's a protocol. There's a protocol that God set for anyone who is going to go and have business with him. And if you have done a study of Exodus, uh, Leviticus, you will see the parameters that God has set for anyone who wants to come and do business with him. The sons of Aaron here did not adhere to the protocol and the demands of the spirit. One of them which is obedience to the decrees that God has set. Number two, they did not sanctify himself, themselves according to the protocol of God. Whereas they are of the kindred of priesthood. I want to make to mark that. They were of the priesthood. However, when they went in according to the way they wanted, without observing the demands of God, God did not flinch in spite of them being the sons of Aaron. The Bible says he smote them right there. And when he smote them, there's a statement that God makes in verses 3. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. Huh? I will be sanctified. I will be sanctified in them that do what that come nigh me and before all people i will be glorified and if you go through down the scripture sister angie you discover that god moses told aaron and his loved ones not to shed a tear don't even dare cry because god will kill you it was other people that wailed and cried you go and read it Whereas the father and the mother and the uncles didn't afford to shed a tear because a people walked in disobedience. But God has called us this year and God is going to show us how to navigate. God is going to demonstrate to us. 
So after that, 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 that incident, God marked how serious he was about the demands of separation for them that want to do business with him. So now if you go to Leviticus 16, 1 to 3, quickly due to time. Leviticus 16. Leviticus 16, reading from verses 1 to 3. Set apart. Remember, we are to be set apart. And this is what the Lord is calling us to. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place, with a young bullock for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. Mm. Hallelujah. You see, God now reminds the people of what they ought to do. If you read Leviticus 16, it is a breakdown of the things that people had to do, the priesthood had to do to prepare themselves, to set themselves apart, worthy for the use of the master, worthy to do business with God. I want you to know that we all, as believers, them that are saved and redeemed of God, carry an infrastructure within us by which we minister unto God, even the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? However, the God by whom we are doing business with has not what? Has not changed. Whereas the big marrow of carrying a cow and a goat and a sheep has now been fulfilled in Christ Jesus when he hung on the cross, you don't have to carry a cow anymore. Your life and my life has been made easier in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. However, the God of whom we are doing business with has not what? Has not changed. <laughs> that is where the secret is. The God of whom we are doing business with has not changed. The reason why I took us to Leviticus was to show us history, to show us the realities of what God demanded in terms of separation, in, time, in terms of consecration for a people that are going to make up their mind and choose to save and do business with this God. Now, Jesus Christ, you know the Bible says, I think it's Hebrews 1, to say God in Sandra's time and the diverse places has spoken to us through the prophets, but now, I'm paraphrasing it, in our time he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, there was something that Jesus Christ revealed in John chapter 4. 424, when he met at the, with the woman at the well. He revealed the truth that God is spirit. If you're writing down, that's a point to write down. Because it will help you in this business and in our going tomorrow. He revealed the fact that God is what? Spirit. And they that worship him are to worship him. How? In truth. In spirit and what? And in truth. Hallelujah. So that is what needs to be awakened upon every man and woman who calls upon the name of the Lord. So, Whereas Fernando has the legs and he can run around and do business in this world, 
every one of us, born of the Spirit, carries the Spirit of God. And it is that Spirit of God that upon which you can do business and enter into God and speak to God and deal with God by the Spirit. However, now there's a demand because you are now the priest unto God. Huh? You and I are what? Are now priests unto God. That process of entering the Holy of Holies after killing animals and bulls and everything, that has been done away with in Christ Jesus. However, we are at the same time required to enter into that holy place through Christ Jesus and do priesthood every single day. So the demand has not changed. And the other businessman on the other side has not changed. So to equip us to be compatible and do business with him, he brings the spirit of a living God as the way to which we interact with. But now there's another demand upon the people. I'll do this, I think, back to front. Amen? Amen? I want you to understand why you need to be set apart. Because you see, the challenge is that sometimes we the teachers or we the ministers of the gospel don't teach the people the way. Are you with me? We don't teach the people the way, the how. And that's where the problem is. Because God does not change. He will not change for man. He is God. It is man who is to align for who? For God. Are you with me? Now, listen to what 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 says. First Peter chapter 2. I'm showing us these things so that the demand for being set apart can be cemented in our spirits. Are you with me? The demand, because God will never change. And for us as a church, we are even so privileged that Christ died. So we can enter the Holy of Holies. We can enter and approach with confidence. However, we need to be a consecrated people for us to effectively do business with this God who is a what? A spirit. Now, First Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. I'll do this back to front and then I'll qualify the point I wanted to qualify in, in where I was saying God is spirit. Can you, please, Sister Shelley, help us from verses 1 to 5? Wherefore, Laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that, the mm. Lord is gracious. Mm. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You see, I have come to a conclusion, and this is my understanding. If you read the Bible, if you read the Bible on your own, I thank God for journals. You know, you know those, what, you know, the, the prayer, the devotional? Prayer journals. The, the, yeah, devotional. prayer journals, devotional. I thank God for those things. And they are good. But you see, sometimes you may, ne you may not get the true concept of scriptures. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and hear me, don't be discouraged. Because I've been accused of, of being arrogant and, and, and uh, hitting people. No. I love you. 
I love you. That journal is good. I'm not castigating it. But what I'm saying is that you may not get the concept of the scriptures. You will do well to journey in the scriptures. Once you journey in the scriptures, top up with that prayer journal and that devotional thing. Let it be a top up. The challenge is that we have taken those uh, devotional things to be the mainstay. And that's where the problem is. It's my, it's counsel. I'm only last on. I give counsel. Are you with me? Your Bible, the word of God, is ultimate. Have it in your house. Read it with everything in you. And let anything else be only supplementary. What the devil does, he has caused people to do this. To get the supplementary become the essence of life and the scriptures become the supplementary. It is wrong. I speak as a man. I could be wrong, but I speak as a man. You see, the idea of priesthood has not changed. So Peter, you know, when you read these things, you need to understand that this was a letter to the what? To the church. This is, you can take as Peter preaching. And he began to reminding, to reminding us to say, look, if you are going to maximize business with God, the God you are dealing with is a spirit. Whereas you are in this world, he still demands some things from you. So what he now says, that as a way of setting yourself apart, which in other words is consecration, he says, wherefore laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisy, and envies, and evil speakings. Now, he brings you to a new reality. In other words, get rid of the old man. And he addresses us in the new reality as new babes. Because we are now new what? New creations. As new babes desire sincere milk. Which is what? The word of God. You see, he says, if so be ye have tested that the Lord is gracious. Uncle Bet, God is saying, if ye have tested that the Lord is gracious, listen to what he says in verses 5. Ye also, as now living, living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable by God. So acceptable to God by Jesus. Are you seeing what's happening here? The thing where Oliab and um, uh, um, um, what, what is the other name, the, the son for, for um, Aaron? Where they died in the Holy of Holies because they offered the sacrifice wrongly, that act of priesthood has not stopped. You understand? Because if you check the Bible, the Bible says we have an altar in heaven. And the one who is manning that altar is the chief priest. Who is who? Jesus Christ. So your obedience, when you separate yourself in all this worldliness, as Paul itemizes up there, what now you are going to achieve? Not a pastor, not a church, you and individually. Number two, you as, your, as a couple. Number three, you as a family. What you are going to achieve is that you will be able to be built up as a holy, as a spiritual house and holy priesthood. And now you will be able to offer spiritual sacrifices. Number one, acceptable to God. However, those spiritual sacrifices will have to go through who? Jesus Christ. But to achieve this, verses one, lay 
aside. Lay aside. If, if, if you, if you, 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 uh, you see, we were singing here. The veil tore apart, you know, what, what song that was that? Yeah. The tore apart and... The veil was a limiting factor. Okay? Because behind the veil is where God dwelt. If you remember, he says, I will dwell at the mercy seat. You understand? <coughs> By the Ark of the Covenant. So, the two cherubs on the Ark of the Covenant protected the glory of God against the incoming priest that is not consumed light immediately. Because the Bible says you cannot see God and live. So he protects you from the glory and he covers by the cherubims. He sat on there at the mercy seat. So when you come in, when the priest came in, he was doing business with God, who is the spirit who is domiciled on the mercy seat. Now, at the death of Jesus, the veil tore. And the but what that meant is that there's no more limitations. Now in Christ, we can approach the Father. The God who was killing men in the Holy of Holies, he is now allowing us to come. But the demands of how we approach have not what? Have not changed. So the demand for the church to be set apart is still the same as it was before. That's why I took us to the beginning to learn how they did it. If you jump to verses 9 of the same, uh, second Peter, or first Peter, just where we were in first Peter, jump to 9. First Peter 2, verses 9 to 12. We ended at 5. So we're just going to skip some things and go to, to 12, to 9 to 12. But ye are a chosen generation, mm. a royal priesthood, mm. a holy nation, a peculiar people, mm. that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness mm. into his marvellous light, Hallelujah. which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works, mm. which they shall behold. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Hallelujah. This year, our anchoring scripture is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9. But ye are a chosen generation. Any man that acknowledges Jesus Christ comes into this reality. Any man. That's why if you heard me, I lament, I said, these things, these things are not for pastors. Pastors, apostles, they are there for guidance. They are there to set as leadership. But the demands of sanctification, consecration, Living a holy and righteous life is for each and every one because we have been moved. The idea that God had to make the whole Israel a nation of priests has achieved in Christ Jesus. <laughs> he has achieved in Christ Jesus. So, Eric can enter and interact with God. Angie can enter. Ryan can enter. There is no intermediaries. We are coming through Christ Jesus. We have been chosen. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Who is addressing to? The church. This was the desire of God from Leviticus. From Exodus. But it has been achieved in Christ Jesus. For them that are of the church, believed him as their Lord. And now he says, we are, verses 11, no, first, okay, let me, let me, verses 9, um, a, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should fall, show forth the praises of him, of, of, of him who hath, what, called you 
out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now in verses 11 it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you like I am doing right now. What I'm doing, you call it preaching. What I'm doing is beseeching you. Are you with me? And I'm beseeching you out of love. I'm beseeching you because the Lord, for some reason, I don't know why, in this season, he has allowed you to sit under my voice. Why? I don't know. That's why I say to some of you, God is reminding you. To some of you, God is uh, 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 informing you. To some of you, God is shouting, literally shouting, listen, hear, hear. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then he says, dearly beloved, I beseech you. Number one, so you no longer belong to this world. Brother David, you are now a part of the priesthood. You are now a Levite. Now what he says is, you are now a stranger. All of us, we are now what? Strangers. And we are what? We are on a pilgrim. That's why the Bible refers unto us as ambassadors. Because we came from heaven. We were predestined that when we find Christ, the God will deal with us as a nation of what? Of priesthood. To offer spiritual sacrifices. But the demands of being consecrated and set apart have not changed. And then he says, strangers and pilgrims abstain from fresh lust which war against you. Therein is your being set apart. Are you with me? Abstain. Abstain. It's English. Do you want me to, to, to explain it? No. So your job, when you understand, because you see, when we consecrate, God comes through. Now, this is what, uh, this is what I was saying. I'll do this back to front. Can we go to Romans 12.1 as we conclude? I almost doing an hour. Romans chapter 12, chapter, chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. We know this one. When you kneel on your knees in the morning, it's priesthood. Did you know that? Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Natalie, when you are on your knees praying, do you know what you're doing? It's priesthood. Your prayer ascends before God as incense. Nadab and the brother, you know why they died? They were offering incense using strange fires. As what? As priests. <laughs> you heard me say God is not Jewish. When you pray, you know, you speak in English, you know, but that, to him it ascends as what? As incense. That, 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 that prayer to become a sweet aroma so that you can celebrate victory and say the Lord has answered, it's because it is emanating from a pure heart. Governized by the blood of Jesus and out of his mercy. So victory is keeping separation. When you are set apart, answers will come. Romans 12, 1. I'm mindful of time. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, Mm. holy, acceptable unto God, which Mm. is your reasonable service. Mm. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is that good and what? Acceptable. To who? To To God. God. Now, you see, if you read Leviticus 16 and you see the manner of sanctification, the animals, the animal for this, the animal for the priest, the animal for that, you have been given a special privilege. Christ died. You understand? But because we are functioning with priesthood, the only demand is that you present your bodies 
a living sacrifice. Rui, do you understand that English? Do you understand that English? Simon, do you understand that English? Every day, in the morning, that, that altar, fire never stopped burning. You understand? Mm -hmm. So sin offering all manner of every single day. But God now says, you and I are to present our what? Our bodies. I was talking about Fernando. And the ears and the legs so that he can function in this world. Are you with me? God has come to tabernacle in you and me. <laughs> Are you with me? He has come to tabernacle in you and me. So, your, your, yours now is to deny worldliness. You remember what Peter was saying? Deny worldliness. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to teach. I, I don't want to... Be, I, I, I hope it's making sense. You are priests. You are in the nation of what? Priest, priesthood. Now, if you remember, you were saying you are strangers, pilgrims, abstain from what? Fleshly, uh, uh, fleshly lusts. That was Peter. Now, here's another witness. What Paul is saying is that you are, his, you, you are to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and what? Acceptable unto God. And this is what he says. This is your reasonable. Mm. So if you don't do this, it means you are unreasonable. Sister Vivian, if you, if you can, it means you cannot accept the suffering of Christ on the cross. It means you've got no appreciation. You and I have no appreciation of what Christ has done. Translating it out of the world of darkness into his what? His dear kin, in, in his dear, in the kingdom of his dear son. When we do not present, the, the only thing is demanding because now there's no sacrifice of every day. We are living. Are you with me? We are living. So we are now living sacrifices. We are to abstain because we are priests unto God. The, 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 the business of God and man has not stopped. The infrastructure is the spirit. In which is doing is, is, is going to, to function with man. However, your body is the temple of the what? Of the Holy Ghost. Mm. So for you to be acceptable, abstain, align, Sister Angie. Set yourself apart. Let nothing be of contaminant unto you. Because by so doing, every time you go into God and do business, you come out victorious. Simple. So the breakthroughs we cry for, the healing we seek, sometimes God will perpetuate a challenge in us because there's something he wants to teach us. Not that he hates us. Are you with me? But what God he wants to teach us is that we are priests unto God and what he's demanding from each and every one of us is that we are set apart. And if you don't understand, he gives us the parameters. This is what I want you to do. Be not conformed to this world but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of the mind. The soul of your soul has to be transformed. How? In the word. When you read First Peter and you discover that God is saying you are a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, a peculiar people, and God is saying abstain from the last, uh, first and last, uh, that war against your soul, you will be educated. Your mind will be what? Transformed. You don't need a pastor. You don't need the word of God. The men we read about, Abraham, had no man ministering before him. <laughs> the men we read about that have done marvelous things, Job honored God. He had no pastor. We are blessed, beloved. We will not fail. You will not fail. You will prevail in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will ascend in God. 
you will ascend in God. You will do that which God demands of you because grace is available. I want to pray over us as I close. I want to pray over us as I close. You don't have to turn there. I'll read this one. And I want you to pray in your spirit. Because I can tell you, this year, God is reminding us of separation because there are so many victories that God wants to give us. Are you with me? There are so many victories, so many breakthroughs that God wants to give, to give us. But what God is calling for is what? Align with my demands. Do you remember when Jesus was preaching on the Mount, on, on the, uh, Mount Olive, the Beatitudes? Remember? Yeah. There's something that he said. Sometimes when you read, you, you wonder, but what was Jesus thinking? He says, cast not pearls before swine. Mm -hmm. huh? Cast not pearls. Mm -hmm. These are marvelous things. Amen. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was Jesus. You, 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 read, you, read, you, read, you read the scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he says, do not give dogs what? Do not... Eh, what, what does he talk about dogs? I can't remember the, how, how he put it. Huh? No, 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 in, in the same, in the same message, first he talks about the dogs, something to the dogs, oh no, he says even a dog, a dog goes to its vomit, returns to its vomit, yeah, you remember, he says a dog, no, it's not me, it's who, so can you imagine you are seated, this is the Messiah, this is the Lord, you are the audience, and God is talking to you to say, Francis, oh Frankie, sorry, sorry, Frankie, Frankie, <laughs> A dog, only a dog goes to his vomit. And yesterday you were doing the thing that you let go yesterday. How would you feel? And then he says, do you know what the things I'm sharing right now? They are so valuable. They are like pearls. And I cannot give them to you because you are just pigs. You step on them. Because the word of God is so precious. I don't, I don't know if you understand. It's so precious. The word of the kingdom is so precious. And when we hold of it, we are to treasure it. Are you with me? But I pray that our God will give us understanding. I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to pray for us. We are a people that God wants to minister and use. He wants to change our lives. He wants to heal our, our lives. He wants to heal our children. He wants to heal our, mar our, our marriages. But he wants us to do what? To align with his demands. These are some of the precepts. Go and do your study of how you are going to achieve separation. To be set apart. For who? For the master's use. Amen. Ephesians 1, 5 to 18. The Bible says, Wherefore I also offer, uh, so, uh, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know that which is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the, in the saints. This was the prayer of Paul to the church. And I pray this prayer. God is my witness. I've stayed myself from sleep a lot of times. Mentioning most of us by name. Pray that you will not fail. And I pray even in the name of Jesus. That as the Lord is, is, is aligning us and to be set apart. I pray that in the name of Jesus, according to the word of the Lord, of the Lord in Ephesians 1.17, that the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. I pray that you will understand what the Lord is trying to communicate to us. Amen. May we be victorious this year. May we arise and become that which God demands of us this year in the name of Jesus. I pray for that grace that Paul prayed upon the church. May that grace be upon each and every one of us. May the eyes of our understanding be opened because there is something that God wants to do in our lives, 
in our families. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Shalom, shalom. Amen.